we are. Don't tell me this is not convincing. Don't tell me this is not convincing. I mean, this is fucking amazing. I didn't know this was even possible. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today I want to do a mind-blowing guitar recording experiment that might change the way how I and you record guitars in the future. I'm serious about that. How do we record guitars so far in rock and metal, rhythm guitars especially? Well, we double them, right? We play the same thing twice, or in metal we sometimes even have four rhythm guitar tracks, and then we pan them left and right. And let's be honest, that's no fun. That's a lot of time and work to play and record those guitar tracks. What if I told you this can be changed? What if I told you you can create a convincing sounding, not crazy sounding, fake artificial double track from just one DI track, from just one performance. Just have a listen to this, one track. So you might remember that I did a video just recently on the same topic, where I showed a trick that I learned from Ulf at Hobo Rec. He showed me the so-called polarity trick, which is actually pretty cool. We put a link to the video here. But this trick was more of an emergency solution if you really only have one performance, one DI track, like in a live situation with only one guitarist, for example. There it really helps but it's not as good as playing the same thing twice. It doesn't sound the same. And I thought like, okay, now it's time to, to go a little further, to dig a little deeper if there's a combination of techniques, if I can throw a lot of things together to create something that sounds a little more convincing. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna use Ulf's polarity trick, but I'm also gonna use this lovely pedal from one of my favorite companies, uh, my Danish friends in TC Electronic, and they have released a, a pedal that is supposed to do exactly what we want. Uh, so we're gonna combine the polarity thing with the TC Electronic Mimic pedal, links to all the gear, courses, tricks, and videos below. Check the description, but that's not all. I'm also gonna try to add as much chaos and randomness, is that a word, to our fake double track by changing the settings on the amp, by changing the mics, by changing the cabinet, and we're gonna see what helps and what does not. So this is going to be really interesting. Let's go. But I'm going to start with today's rig. As you might have heard, we're listening to the infamous Grindstein track. I've used this playback quite a few times. So this is the playback program drums and a bass. I always get comments about this bass tone. Uh, let me show you. I use it most of the time in our videos. It's a combination of the CLA plugin from Waves and the Dark Glass pedal. Here you can see the settings. Wait a minute, here it is. And this is going through an IR called Dangle Through Guitars. Let's have a listen to the bass. And this is my Eminence Orange bass IR pack. If you like this tone, check out the links below to that IR pack. It really fucking rules. Anyway, that's the bass tone, drums are programmed. And then we basically have two DI tracks here, left and right. And just so we have a real reference of a double track, I have already reamped both of those DI tracks through the same setup. They sound like this. So that is a double performance. I played the riff twice, and that is our reference. This is where we want to go with only one DI track. But let me talk about today's rig, because I'm using some new gear I haven't used before. Really cool stuff. So we're going through my radial reamping box that you can't see. I'll just add something in B-roll, into a Tube Screamer, pretty standard, into my beloved Brunetti XL, and the high gain channel, the third channel. Then we are going into a cabinet I've never used before that I just received and it's very promising. This one is coming from Driftwood. It's an oversized cabinet. I think that you can buy in any speaker combination, but mine came loaded with some very interesting speakers called, I think V60 TAD. 
And those are British-made Celestians that actually, I mean, the rumors say they are very close to British-made V30s. Um, that's very interesting. If you want me to do a full video about that cab, let me know. It's an oversized cab. It, so it reminds me a little of a great sounding Marshall 1960 V cabinet being a little more raw and a little more open sounding than the typical super controlled and fat Mesa Boogie 4x12. Yeah, you're gonna hear it in a minute. And I got two mics connected. Let me just play you the DI track. And this is live, you know, the cab is over there. We're actually reamping right now. Uh, if you go into that room, you die immediately because it's super loud. Let's see, let's play and loop the DI track. This is the input of my mixer. Here you can see me talking. I got two mics connected. Over here, the standard 57. And right here, we got the Austrian Audio OC818, which has become my Desert Island condenser microphone for pretty much everything I record. <laughs> doing vocals with it, doing overheads with it, great microphone. I just heard that Andy Sneep and a lot of other people are also using it in combination with a 57. It's really cool. It sounds like this, solo. And I got it really close to the speaker. Together it sounds like this. So a little thicker. But because it's really close, I had to shift it slightly. You see this? So I had to move it by 33 samples because, let's see, let's go back to zero. When I first blended those mics, it sounded like ass. So then I just start shifting the mics until, until I find uh, a good combination. Let's just, let's just do that one more time. Here we are in the right spot. So something between 33 samples and 35. I like that one now. If you want to learn about blending microphones, blending guitar tones, check out my Academy Cola Audio Cult. Got tons of courses where I show you how I do this. Anyway, this is our guitar tone. And this is the doubled version. And I'm sure there are some people out there who still think, hey, why isn't he just copying one track and then pen them left and right? And why do you have to play it twice? That's so much work. Let me show you. So we're gonna mute the right one. And I've just copied this one here, the left one to another channel. And you see this one here is panned to the left and this one is panned to the right. So let's just start with the left one and then I'm gonna unmute the other one. Let's see what happens. Those are the same signals, so there's no difference. If you put one left, one right, they're just gonna, you know, move into the middle. That doesn't help us, because what we want is this. Okay, so, and here you see all the results of my experiment. So I went further and further and further. The first thing I did was Ulf's polarity trick. Let me tell you one more time how this works. Basically, what you do is, on the way out, to, into the reamping rig. What you do is you flip the polarity, the face. So I did this here, boom. Then on the way back, in this case on both microphones, you gotta flip the face again. Boom, boom. And the idea behind this trick is this. If we flip the face on the way out, it's gonna make the entire rig perform differently. You know, because all the waveforms are the other way around, more or less. So all the parts of the amplifier, of the tube screamer, of the cat, everything is working slightly differently. And this way we are creating some kind of chaos, some kind of randomness that helps us to change the performance. And then on the way back, we flip the polarity again because we don't want it to be flipped, all right? So let's see how that sounds. We start with the track on the left. And that is already quite a bit more stereo, but not really convincing. So what I'm hearing is basically that the low end stays mono and the upper, like the noisy part of the guitar tone becomes stereo. I mean, better than nothing, right? 
Compared to this, just a copy. It's already a little more stereo. So we can see this helps us, you know, brings us one step further, but we're not there yet. Next thing I did was using this lovely Mimic pedal from, um, or Mimic, I don't know, Mimic? A doubler pedal from TC Electronic. And this thing is unique. This, I, I don't think there's anything else out there. So basically what I did was you have a dry knob and, if, and an effect knob. So dry to zero, full effect, then you can decide how many additional voices you want to have. I just want to have one. And I placed it in between, that's what they recommend, in between the Tube Screamer and the amp. You could also put it into the effect loop. I didn't try that because I can already tell you it worked really, really well. And then there's this tightness knob and I had it in the middle, but sometimes it already sounded a little too untight. You will see that. So don't go here unless you want to imitate your, 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 whatever, your drunk guitarist or something. So that, this was the setting. And that's how I reamp the next track. Let's have a listen. So let's go from the polarity thing to only using the Mimic pedal without any polarity tricks. Not bad, right? What a wonderful effect. So this is already much better, but I can still hear a certain static phase thingy going on in the middle. So it doesn't sound perfect. I can still hear there are some phase issues going on. I think you can hear it a little better here. So if we go back to the real double, it sounds better. Still, I gotta say, I'm really impressed by this. You know, if you sometimes need fake doubles, get this pedal. Link below as usual, get it. It's already like fucking amazing, great. Anyway, we're not there yet. So I thought like, what can we do next? Let's combine the pedal with the polarity trick, right? So now let's compare the Mimic pedal alone and Mimic pedal plus polarity. And I can hear a lot of that static phasey thing goes away. It also feels a little wider and a little more stereo on the low end. It's not a huge difference, but we're making another step forward, right? It's just a little more chaos added. And I gotta say, I really like it. But I did not stop there, of course not. So the next step was like, hey, how can we add some more chaos to this? What can we do? And the easiest thing was just to change the settings on the amp a little bit. I mean, not to change the entire tone, but just whatever. You know, touch the each EQ knob a little bit, a little more mids, less highs, whatever. That's not a big change, but I can hear things getting a little wider again. Once again, more like on the open stuff. Helps a little bit one more time. Not a big change, but hey, you just have to change the setting slightly. So that can be done in two seconds. All right. But for now, let's just go back to just using the Mimic pedal. And we compare this with what we have now. Still quite phasey compared to... Which just feels like the Mimic pedal is doing whatever, 80% of the work. And then we've just added more and more chaos. So we're getting closer and closer. Now, next step was to slightly shift the microphone, one of the microphones, but just again, a little bit 
sounds like this. Let's already compare this to our reference. Just have a listen, maybe in the mix with this fake double track. Let's see. Compared to the original. And fake again. And I would consider that already pretty much usable, don't you think? We're getting there. So next idea was, what if I replace both the entire amp or the cabinet, can we get even closer? I mean, we're already pretty much there, but what happens next? So next was I used, maybe you can see it. Can you see it? No, uh, maybe you can. This amp over there, it's the Brunetti here, and we've got the Blackstar St. James there. I just quickly threw it there, and like within two minutes, I tried to find a setting that like frequency wise is close to the Brunetti. So this is the Brunetti. And this is the Blackstar. I would say close enough for now. So now we are combining all those different changes. We're using the polarity trick. We're using the mimic pedal in this setting. We're using slightly different um, mic setup, and but we're also using a different amp, but still the same cabinet. Let's see how this sounds. <laughs> Makes it even better, right? Original. Black Star. I mean, if you want to hear something, you could, but I can work with this. And this is fucking mind blowing. I can work with this. But the final step into perfection for me was to use another cabinet. So I just flipped to another cabinet this time only mic with a 57. And I was using the standard Mesa Boogie 412 V30 from 2002, I think. The one that I always use. Sounds like this solo. So this is the Driftwood cab. Mesa cab. So you see, Driftwood is a little more aggressive, a little more raw. Uh, Mesa sounds rounder and fuller. So that's going to change the tone. So now we really don't have the same tone on the left and the right anymore. It's a pretty drastic change. But let's have a listen to how that sounds combined. I'm going to move this one here. And now I can switch between, like, if you see the green, it's our fake track. If you see this only white it's our it's the original it's a reference and this is pretty ridiculous right F. this one is a little louder let me just correct that We are. Don't tell me this is not convincing. Don't tell me this is not convincing. I mean, this is fucking amazing. I didn't know this was even possible. But let me sum it up. How did I get from only one DI track, one, only one performance, to a convincing sounding stereo, doubled stereo guitar track? Well, I guess most of the work is handled by this little thing here that I totally recommend. Get this pedal, link below. It's amazing. So this is most of the work. So you reamp again and use this. Then you use the polarity trick. That means on, on the way out before the amp, you switch 
the polarity. You can do that inside your DAW, you can do that on your reamp box, doesn't really matter. And on the way back, on the mic pre, from your microphones, you switch the phase again. Now I can hear you asking, is that possible with plugins as well? Theoretically, yes. It just works better with real amps. I mean, that's analog. I think that's just more chaos with all those parts behaving differently because of the polarity change. Um, it works better with amps. And then you have to try which amps work better for that. It works even better, and that's the next step, if you try to change as many other parameters as possible to add some chaos, which means slightly move the mics or use another microphone, use another amp, that also really helped. And finally, maybe even use another cab or another speaker. So the more you change here, the more you will get rid of a certain like, like static phasiness that the Mimic alone still has. But together, it works like a charm, right? And now it's up to you to do some crazy experiments and just to find out, hey, it works even better with this amp or it doesn't work with the other amp. But I'm pretty sure this can save a lot of time, right? You can use your time for, for creativity for making great music instead of playing guitar on a metal album for days. Um, yeah, what I haven't tried now is if you can actually get four rhythm tracks from only one DI. That's what I'm gonna do next. I was just too excited, so I wanted to do a spontaneous video, okay? Um, but still, even if you can only get two out of one, it saves 50% of the fucking playing time. How cool is that, right? You can see, I'm excited. All right, that's all I wanted to show you today. Um, Get that pedal, uh, what else? Uh, let me know if you want to see a Driftwood video. That cab is kind of cool, kind of interesting. Maybe you want to see me comparing it to the Mesa cab. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, maybe that's all. If you want to learn more about miking cabs and blending guitar tones, mixing and all that kind of stuff, you might have heard about this, but I do have my own academy uh, where we have countless courses. So there's a link below to Cola Audio Cult where this guy explains a lot of stuff, but we also have other cool people explaining stuff to you. Anyway, that's all for today. Say hello to your grandma. I haven't talked about her for a while. How's grandma? Still into Juga Juga music? I think so, right? Have a beer with her. That's all. Greetings from Germany. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.